Between the graphic images on television, social media, or their phones, our kids were exposed to some very graphic violence that unfolded at the U.S. Capitol Wednesday. We saw rioters storm buildings, rioters clashing with police, guns drawn, lawmakers huddled under desks. Our kids no doubt had questions. So what do we moms and dads tell them? Do we confront this head on? Dr. Tracy Alloway is a psychologist and psychology professor at UNF. Good morning. Good morning, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Of course. Knowing our children might be anxious, might be scared, how open and honest should we be about what's happening, especially since kids are uh, naturally curious? That's a great question. I think as a parent, we first of all have to accept that our children are going to be exposed to some of these images and some of this information, whether through the home or even through school from their friends and through their teachers. So it's important as a parent to be prepared and have some idea of how you're going to approach this subject. And as a parent, I guess it's pretty important from the get go that we reassure them and let them know they're safe. This is especially important for our younger children, especially the, the two to six and seven year old age bracket. All they want to know is how are they going to come out of this? Are they safe? Are they protected? Are mom and dad safe? Are their family members safe? So it's important to reassure them and to reiterate that they are going to be protected and they're in a safe area with family. Kids of different ages handle things differently. Keep discussions age appropriate. Definitely. That is so important. We have to remember that, um, first of all, ask your children how much they know. And when you approach this conversation with your child, ask them the questions instead of coming to the table ready to explain facts. Psychologists find that sometimes explaining things can appear to some children as like you ready to kind of um, revving up that, that emotional side of things a little bit more. So approach the conversation by asking them open-ended questions. What do you know? What do you hear? What do you think about that? And especially that last question can encourage critical thinking in your child. So you said ask them questions. Is it also important to give them space to ask questions themselves? That is especially important too. And the key here is to allow them to express their emotions. For the younger children, they may need concrete emotions like, do you feel worried? Do you feel sad? Do you feel angry? And for the older children, they may just wanna talk about how they're feeling. And as a parent, it's important to give them the space and use what's called active listening. So in other words, be present in that moment, allow them to speak without feeling that you have to interject or explain what's going on. And for older kids, uh, especially teenagers, how do you address the issue of disinformation and the fact that everything they're hearing may not be truthful and that it's important that they seek out the truth? That's especially important, especially as we get older. Critical thinking is a big part of learning how to navigate what is correct and what is incorrect information. Um, we can do two things. One is to encourage our child, first of all, to um, adopt that other person's perspective. What do you think is happening here? So again, get them to adopt that second person perspective rather than just taking in on board everything that they're hearing. And that's a really key part of that for them as well. And everything that happens in the world around us can be a teaching moment. So what's the best approach to doing that? A key here, Bruce, is to be able to dissociate the person from the action. So as a parent, be really mindful to talk about the actions and try not to bring in your own personal biases about using uh, person labeled uh, information. Talk about the action, help them understand how to evaluate the action rather than to judge or to critique the person. So what you're saying is don't call somebody bad necessarily. That's correct. Dr. Tracy Holloway, appreciate you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Jen?